Well, what's the first item? First item, big procedures. How this works. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Billy. Just a second, I gotta go back to here. I'm just playing here. I even forgot what my issue sheet was. Oh, your anyway. issue sheet's not on there. It's Sam's issue sheet now. This was something that was brought up, big procedures was brought up at the last meeting for new business, next meeting. Oh, yeah. It was one of the items. <clears throat> uh, I believe some of the comments previously were about uh, there was concern of potentially the town, and it, excuse me if I'm like wrong on the wording, but doing redos, going back to the same spot, uh, and there were some concerns raised over that. Uh, I can assure you that the repairs that are being made, if they appear to be in the same area, because they're in the same trench, uh, it's not a redo, it's an, an additional break on the line further down. Um, sometimes it's inevitable um, that that will happen with the age of our infrastructure, uh, so we repair them the best we can. Um, do you document the sound? Like, I know you document it on a map, but do you document the actual repair? Like. You go there and you then kind of like an as found picture and what you see and then uh, probably not a photo depends on the type of break um, sometimes if it's something a little bit different the guys will take a photo just to kind of catalog it so our p5 uh, will normally be making notes as to what they found what the repair was and then we try to database that the best we can uh, i just think that would be a benefit for us counselors that um, just so that you we know what you're up against when it comes to <coughs> When it comes to the repairs that you have, and then and then also it's obviously a benefit for you to create a technical database for repairs in the future and stuff. So, well, I just I like when you see stuff like Ross Avenue, what started out as one hole, right, and then it becomes like Hazelwood. Right? Right? Mark say Hazelwood. Hazelwood, Hazelwood sorry. Yeah. I was like, is there one I'm not aware of? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hazelwood, yeah, sorry. But something that I'm assuming started as, as one thing and then it just leads into more and more and more. Yeah. It, right? it definitely morphed for sure, that one. Yeah, but it's like what, like I understand why you did what you did because you had to fix things. Yeah. But are you finding that more and more that you're going into what you think is like a, something simple and it turns out to be something way bigger? With that dig in particular on Hazelwood, we, we were hopeful that it was going to be better than it was uh, and, and early early on in the project when we were digging down just thawing the line out just to kind of see what we were dealing with uh, when we dug into the middle and were uh, pressurizing the line we were only seeing the leaks coming from one section of the line so we'd hope that it was you know half the line was still in good shape it was just the initial half that started freezing that was that was the issue um, but once we started pressurize that section of line that we switched out uh, then the pressure was high enough on the on let's say called the south south end of the line uh, where it did let go as well. So something that we tried to kind of diagnose and try to, you know, pick away the best we could uh, turned out to be bigger and a bigger problem than it was. So kind of an unknown situation, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, we can make our best estimates of what we're dealing with when, when it's underground, but uh, sometimes we not a lot of information, I guess. On uh, Hazelwood, though, your gut instinct that the whole 500 feet was going to have to be replaced, right? Uh, according to our guys, that was their concern, yeah. was that potentially the whole pipe was damaged. Um, so our first step in kind of addressing that was to dig down and start to thaw the line, get all the ice out of the line. So we dug several bell holes because we can only go so far with our thawing unit. Uh, so we dug, I believe, three times throughout the length of the line, and we were able to thaw the entire line. Uh, and as I mentioned, as we, pressure, as we repaired the section that the water seemed to be coming from one side, um, there was no water coming into the trench from this, we'll call it the south side. Um, and once we pressurized that line at, with new pipe, it was creating enough pressure in the rest of the pipe that it began to show itself as, as being collapsed or being uh, spidered. So up to date, like, like you've worked on it and whatever, and it's just laid there since. Like, so are you going back to do anything? No, it's, uh, the, it, the water's on, it's operational. Uh, water's been restored. The only people that didn't have water was the provincial building. Yeah, they did um, that this weekend. Correct, because their service line uh, had issue. And I know there's been some discussion potentially of, of would it have been cheaper potentially just or easier just to contract out all of Hazelwood. Uh, the provincial building had a, a very challenging time to find someone to come and do that repair of their service line. And um, one of the quotes they received for that work from a company from down south uh, was well in, in excess of $100,000 to just do the service line. So what we repaired was several fold, right? So if we were to contract out 
that entire length of renewal, we were talking probably close to half a million. Just if I just extrapolate that number and mm -hmm. just attach it, like yeah. that's not an exact science, but um, let's say four hundred thousand dollars worth of worth of contracting out. So so now, like, and I get this from the people from the provincial building is that it was left unattended, like, and there was nothing done. So. Could they have graded it and used the street, or why was it blocked off for this length of time? The center where we had it dug up? Yeah. Uh, because uh, we were trying to get it done as quick as we could when we were backfilling, we weren't power packing the entire way. So we're in, in, I guess, our concern of it settling out and creating a big mud hole for someone to drive in, we wanted to let it settle as much as we could before we open it. Uh, we will be opening it in the winter and grading it a final time before the winter, so it'll be, it should be open. And you're not concerned about the water that has, like the rain in that is precipitated down, going to freeze on you again? Uh, no, winter? no, I don't think, uh, well I guess any winter there's issue potentially with uh, with freeze up, so, um, so I'm not sure exactly how to answer. You're saying the, the water has infiltrated additionally into that area? Yeah, uh, because, I'd see. because it wasn't packed, it was just backfilled. Eh? Correct, so, yeah. So when you have torrential rains, or you have some rains, that goes down in, eh? Yeah. And no, like it has the potential to freeze like really good now so and did was there a frost shield put in that one did the guys put a frost shield in no 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 it did just seemed that it took a long time to get that one done and there's lots of inquiries about it and whatever so. and we're not putting an asphalt over before winter no no uh it would it will likely still be settling quite a bit between now and spring so I guess it's always tough to to decide how big the scope of the work is if you don't really can't really see how big the repair is. Eh? Correct. Yeah, and that was sort of our, and that's why we sort of took it in in, in stages when we even when we we're thawing it, um, and when, like I said, when we pressurized the line and the water was only coming in from one side of the pipe, we thought, okay, so we're only dealing with half half the issue, um, and potentially less. You know, once you start opening up, but then, like I said, once we pressurized the line, it became a whole other. Problem because Seventh Street, we were worried about the same thing on Seventh, but luckily it was only, you know. Yeah. So like Bill's comment about uh, preparing the uh, the hole after is that standard procedure? Like how we did that? Or no, that? we will we will power pack um, again. Just the size of it and the length of time we were taking the power pack. We were they were we just wanted to get it all done. Well, was there any concerns though that water has saturated that whole um, fill and that now when the winter comes it freezes and pushes on the pipe and. In other locations where we've done that, we've we've never seen that happen before. So I, I don't I can't say it's never going to happen or yeah. it never happened, but just it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened before since I've that I've seen. Yeah. So what do you need <clears throat> to be able to uh, dig that hole, fix the pipe, backfill it, pack it, and smooth it out? But what do you need? Because like, to, arguably, it's going to sit like that for the better part of another year. Not really a good situation. So, what do you need to be able to do this better? Um, Look, like, is it standard procedure in every community that these things just sit for a year? I, I guess if you're concerned about settling, even if you pack it, you're going to see some level of settling. So, I, I would have recommended against paving it this year, even if we had power packed it, because of the chance of it settling, and yeah. especially being in the crown of the road where it is, you definitely don't want to have your crown settle because then. You have your water cooling. Well, why can we pave it? Like communities, like you don't go to the city of Winnipeg and have the uh, the road. Like it, I mean, without thinking costs here. But yeah. So but then you have dug in it, fixed it, packed it, paved it. If you had enough people and resources and money. Uh, all those things would be helpful. Obviously, people, resources, and money um, would be definitely beneficial. <laughs> but I mean, that's what I think what Herb's asking. Yeah, like, yeah. What do you mean? Why, so people understand why we don't do it the way we did. So the standard practice since I've been here is that nothing gets paved the year that it's dug. That was always sort of how uh, the, the town has done things. Every time there was, a, there was a hole that was dug, it was left. We wait for the settling, and then it gets paved the following and the rationale behind that is just the settling. The fact it's going to settle, even if you pack it, you're going to see settling. So, um, yeah, on like normal. Curve. So right in front of uh, your place in the 600 yeah. block, we we pack the, the crap out of that, and you're still seeing settling occurring yeah. at, yeah. at a large yeah. amount. So it, <clears throat> if money wasn't an object, 100% I would pave that, and then we could rip it out and then do it again next year. 
Uh, I've talked to the crew about doing like a, like a small amount of asphalt over it, maybe a one inch or two inch lift just to kind of protect it and then rip it out and do it next year. That, that's a significant cost to the town, so uh, I'm not sure if that's something you guys want to entertain. Um, so if you had that pact, would you be able to get anybody to pay that anyway? So if it was all packed for you to go, you were, you know, yeah, let's, let's do it. Would, you, would that be a realistic thing? Because I guess, again, back to her, uh, the mayor's uh, point, do we need to, do we need to buy ourselves more paving stuff? Like, we know we've got the recycler, but, and I, and I don't know enough about paving, do we just, can you put more pavement on a pavement if it settles, or do you have to rip it out again? Like, it's, it's, because it just seems like, you know, we, we say, well, the contractor is not, they're either not around, unavailable, or it's too expensive to burn out. Mm -hmm. And then, then these things just stay around, and then they potential to get re-damaged, and then you just hear about the complaints because it's not just sitting there, right? So then, and they don't get to hear all the story, right? right. So it's kind of like, is it, is that a, is that something that we could do, or do you need like eight guys to, and then they got to get trained, and then the equipment's going to cost five hundred grand, and it's going to be, and, and not only just the equipment, also the, it's making the asphalt. I, I feel is probably one of the, the more the most difficult challenge that would be kind of had in that situation. You can buy the paving equipment. I didn't believe. I was told the town used to have paving equipment for, for a certain yeah. amount of time. Yeah. Um, I feel, if anything, the town should be focusing on becoming really strong at the services we do provide instead of trying to continually uh, augment this, like the service we provide. Like, like we, we could do paving and we could hire more guys and we can do that, but how effective are we going to be in that uh, in the short and medium term? I don't think very, very effective unless we have the right people involved. Um, so I would, I'd rather leave that to contractors. The question going back a step about uh, can we do it? Can we get the, the resources? This year was sort of a, a difficult year um, for Northern Lights Paving in terms of just getting their plant set up and getting and getting uh, going. So I mean that was unfortunate. Uh, Whitford is in town right now doing the UCN parking lot. Um, Maple Leaf was in the area. So the, there are opportunities sometimes to kind of to, to, to look elsewhere as well, I guess. Are we doing any more paving this year? Patching, yes. Um, there's a few spots we'd like to have done, uh, just the timing hasn't worked out. But is that us or is that contractors? Contractors. Well, and us too. We, we will do patching as, as best we can, but there is okay. a few. That, like, I'd like to get the 4th Street done by the RCMP. That's We even like planned to do it, but the, um, uh, there was an issue with the contractor's uh, plant broke down. Uh, we'd like to do that parked by Fast Gas. There's a couple mm -hmm. on Bell that have been sitting waiting for a while. Um, with the council's blessing, I'd like to get the 7th Street section by UCN paved for sure. So is Hazelwood, and again, is Hazelwood a waste of time? Because I just see what's going to happen, right? So winter's going to come. It's going to, you know, make it a little bit of a rain or thing, so send the grader out. Okay, roll it over it. Okay, two days. It's still kind of, okay, go get the guys out, put a little mm -hmm. more grader. So we do that for however many months. Yeah. And then, then the unsatisfied people that are around, and they're they're complaining about it, and rightfully so. And then, so is it worth? I don't know. Is it like I don't know how much that is to pave. Is it worth that? That you know, two thousand three, whatever it is, it's paved. Okay, everyone's happy for in the short term. It's going to resettle. Spring comes, rip it, and then put another uh, thicker layer on. I, you know, because because again, how many times have they been there already in front of your house? And dropping gravel and scraping it, like I've seen them, I've seen them there at least four or five times. Already. Correct, and that and that was a, a, a shallow depth, yeah. and yeah. it was packed uh, extensively, right? Yeah. In, in preparation for potentially uh, getting getting somebody in to, to pave the six hundred block this year, right? So, yeah. Um, so, but a lot of that, a lot of that's happened though because of the rain we've had. So I guess back to the point, like if you did put a skim layer over it and then let it settle and whatever, I'd rather have a settle than a bump. And then rip it out, and then do it in the like. I, I don't know the money. Like you're the, you know the. So uh, we did uh, that little chunk on Bignell Avenue, a small patch on Bignell. I believe just off. I think that was around the sixteen thousand dollar mark. That that little patch on Bignell. So you're looking at something several, you know, tenfold of that length, if not more. And obviously, you wouldn't go as thick as you did there. Um, so I, I couldn't ballpark it comfortably tonight, but. Uh, 
just to do that crown, let's say a two inch lift or whatever on that crown, you're gonna you're gonna pay at least fifty thousand. I would say maybe more, maybe seventy five thousand. You're talking about his watch. Yeah, right? at least at least I would say just again ballpark, but. Um, well, were you doing some painting this year? I thought we said that we were going to spend four hundred thousand on painting. We did, is. but we weren't able to find anybody to do it. Oh, so just just, just another out. thought, Sam. I don't know. Sure. It's just a, I'm just going to throw that out there. Hazelwood, for example, you take the grader, you pack it, you, you do whatever. Um, could you do such a thing as for like no dust with, uh, say, taking um, uh, some calcium and pack it in there? Oh, uh, something. Seal coating. Like doing like a like, Just run the oil over it and then run the gravel over it and just like do a seal coat. I, I, I've never seen seal coat used in a paw, but I think it's something that we should be looking at. It's a big to the road. Uh, it's a to turn on the road. Yeah, yeah. Something we can uh, explore. It, it's just a thought. Like, and I don't know if Strakuski does. I think he does want a seal coat. And he set up here at town. So. You know, it's just a thought that what you do is you, uh, you put a layer of oil over you put gravel over, you run it through, you pack it, and you have a dust-free surface, and it's probably zero dollars compared to paving. But it would make it would get you through for the time being, and then when everything's set, if it's settled and went all the garbage, it wouldn't matter because it wouldn't be that costly. Just a thought, just mm -hmm. throwing that out there. No, uh, that that uh, there was a company in town recently. They were uh, talking about chip sealing. Same idea. Yeah. Uh, and we priced out some stuff on the just like back road areas where we get complaints about dust and uh, it was considerable still the cost. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, so I, I, can, I can get some pricing and see what we can do. Um, if you have a contact that you know that does it locally, that would be wonderful. Um, I think, I'm not saying for sure, but I think it's true. Locally they do? Or well, just them as a... Well, set up here to cement plant, so. Okay. The only question I have, Sam, is... Um, before we, we do all these other things, are we confident that Hazelwood is repaired? Yeah. And there won't be another dig up? <laughs> no, that's, that's like a trick question, right? That's a trick question because like, I can't, can't, I can't promise, like I can't guarantee, like, like I have confidence in the workmanship, I have confidence in the guy's ability to do it. Um, Same. And the area you fixed. Good. Yeah, everything that we repaired is good, but but, okay. but sur the service lines the way into let's say the yeah. via rail it looked yeah. good, but I, I can't speak for past the property line going in what it'll look like. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, with the private contractor, the service line for the provincial building, so I can't guarantee that. You know, I have, again I have confidence yeah. in the contractor, but I don't know if something else will arise. I guess it's, it's tough to say. And you know, we fix everything to the valve. You know, what if the opposite side of the valve opens up and the, the, the public optics of that would be like, oh, they're back on Hazelwood again, but it's potentially another, you know, issue. And just with the age of our pipes, I, yeah, it's... What is the age of that pipe on Hazelwood? I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Probably 50 years old. 50. And our, uh, our asphalt recycler mm -hmm. is only set up for, like, basically just bottles. Uh, yeah, we can go like a medium-sized patch. We've been able to get away with, uh, depending on the temperature that we're patching, because uh, the asphalt gets cold pretty quickly. Okay. Um, is there uh, like, and I, I've never, I've never watched them like you know use it, sit down a lot. Like, is there a reason why if they had an extra couple of guys, they could just like start like throwing it out there on a big, big section, just, uh, just regardless of the, you know, quality, how it looks, it's just yeah. like. It's going to get us through the, the the volume that we can make is limited, yeah. and so that that seems to be the, the kind of the bottleneck for us is the volume that we can create. Um, we did we did talk about potentially like getting through the winter with like especially on the six hundred block there. Um, we did talk about running a small skiff through there. Um, there'd be a substantial cost, and it would take up like all our you know resources for our guys to, to do it, especially now that we don't have our summer students and uh, you know so we're back to our normal. It's sort of complement of staff, so it would be a it'd be a bit large undertaking. But you know, again, if if, if council doesn't mind us, because the optics of that again, right? So the town fixes it. Now we're up there ripping it out again the next year. There's a different optic that we have to look at there. You know, is that going to look like we're just throwing money away, or um, so that's something that you guys, I guess, that would be uh, up to you guys. I, I'm willing to, to pay whatever you guys want. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of. It's just my opinion. 
I would rather they rip it out again. Well, what's, your, what's your opinion on those things? You know, like, like, what, I, is it throwing good money after bad? Like what? Yeah, what, that's, what? That, on Hazelwood, hundred percent. That's why we, we didn't even bring it up to you guys because we just were like, let's just let's just limp it through. That lane's wide enough. If there's traffic issues, we can put no parking signs on one side. We can sort of maneuver that. It's not a high traffic area like to to that degree, in my opinion. Okay. Um, so, and people sort of have become accustomed to avoiding it if they're not necessarily need to go down there. Uh, the parking sort of has worked itself mm -hmm. out with people. The provincial building being really good with us in terms of. Um, you know, not you know, not parking the in the worst spots there. So, I th I think we just leave it and we're good. The only the only place where I'm concerned is actually like the 600 block, just because the high traffic, right? You have the oh, schools, yeah. the school buses. So that's an area where I was thinking, or even Seventh Street over by UC. That's a high traffic area. So if we were able to pave, I'd like to pave Seventh Street uh, uh, before the end of the season. Uh, and if we can look at doing a skiff over top of 600 block, I would be okay with that, just because of the high traffic nature of those areas. But oh, for sure. I would drop our kids off at school. I, I don't disagree with necessarily the, the good money after bad, but at the end of the day, if what happens if we had a bad year for water breaks, so we let 50 water break holes sit there for a year and a half, you know what I, you know what I mean? When yeah. you're, I think when people pay, and I, and I think it's a legitimate thing, when you're paying your taxes, you know, I don't care if you had to rip it up again, I don't necessarily want the this particular section like this for a year mm -hmm. i think the optics just says like like i don't know like because 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 the ironic thing about it is you pay it a year after it's not going to sink it no, it, 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 it could potentially yeah. exactly right yeah. so so it's it's i know you're, it's has less potential to do so but you know the rose is a little bit of a different project there right that makes more sense the whole thing was ripped up let it sit for for the year, for mm -hmm. sure, the timing of it was was okay, but some of these other areas, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think you spend you you spend the money, you fix it up, and then if it's still sinking, you rip it up and do it again. At least that way, then you kind of somehow get ahead of the game. If we if we wait a year, it's just like you're always going to be you're always going to. If we had a bad year now, like some of these spots are going to be sitting for a long, long time, and then it looks. I don't even know how you keep track of all, all the places. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, think the, I think the radio station does a good job in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got lots of people monitoring. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I, guess my, I can check my Facebook, I can check my email, I can check yeah. downtown or grocery store. Yeah, I go to, go to any coffee shop, I can try to go to a public event. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, well, more to come. Yeah. yeah. Uh, regional Waste Disposal Ground Update. Uh, so I just want to put a point here. So I declared a conflict on this in the past, but uh, CKP has zero interest in moving forward with any of the discussions with regards to the regional landfill. So I don't believe I'm in a conflict any further. And uh, I will, uh, you know, obviously if something comes up that I think I will obviously step out right away and, and declare that. But uh, this time I don't see any further conflict. All right, thank okay. you. Uh, so the last correspondence I have with the working group is the beginning of August, uh, where Indigenous Service Canada reiterated that are still uh, committed to moving the project forward. Um, as to uh, Richard Bolton was doing some tabletop discussions, uh, he met with us, the RM. Um, I don't believe at this time he's met with uh, the Chief and Council on OCN yet, uh, but I know that that's something that they're still exploring. Um, so I put an email out to Richard to kind of get an update on that. So I haven't received anything back from Richard uh, to report yet. Uh, I provided a copy of the business plan. I think I already did that after I sent it. I thought, I think I already did this before, but I was trying to give you guys some, some form of information, uh, but nothing really new to report on this. Um, I'm not sure if the timing in the summer just wasn't, wasn't working or if because elections were closer. Now that the election is over, could we schedule a meeting with the Reeve and the Chief? And let's get this figured out. Absolutely. Because we wanted to have some sort of word by December. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now that now that's settled, let's get this figured out. Now, do you want that to be a large group, or do you no, want? No, 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 no. no. We tell the Reeve and the Chief Eve to bring one guy, and let's get this. So a plus one for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Whoever your counterparts are at the various municipalities, those would be the right people to have. Okay. Sounds good. Water treatment plants. Mm 
So I guess the question really came up about or the question I had was that we invested some money. Well, I was thinking when well, we got to have that river pump issue, and, uh, and then we talked about how we we're going to prevent that from happening again. And and one of the things that we talked about is having this operation maintenance manual yep. training for our guys. Mm -hmm. And it's really just looking for an update on where we're at with that. I know we invested lots of money. How is it going to? Yeah, we, we finally we got a draft in June. Um, we sent it to the water plant. Uh, I, I currently am, we're operating without a chief plant operator at the moment. Uh, he's slated to return uh, hopefully by the end of this month. Um, so my hope was that I could be, we could begin the full implementation of this, of this uh, the draft. Well, at least getting the draft started to make sure it actually fits what we want and, and, and we can move forward with it uh, before we get a final revision. Uh, it is very difficult to do that without the chief plant operator being present just because of his skills and his knowledge. Um, so we haven't moved as fast as we would have liked on that, but it's not something that's uh, that's fallen off our radar either. So yeah, so I see the uh, like I seen the the emergency response, trying to understand the different hazards and you know creating good like a good risk matrix on that, and that looks good. And then I flipped through some of the pages just quickly, and you know there is a bunch of information that looks like from another municipality. Like the contact list is all wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he provided to us to update it as well. So okay. we, we already have an emergency response plan. This was just to kind of to take it to the next level to to formalize it. And then, and then the, th the the most important thing I was thinking about being an, uh, a maintenance guy in the past is that what do we, how do we maintain the equipment we have today? Not not so much the emergency and how are we going to make sure that the guys that are out there got enough training and that we've got enough support for them, the tools, so that. When you tell him to go inspect the pump, he knows what he's actually looking for and what the details are. Um, some of that is just on the job training. Again, the chief plant operator had, having more experience was able to kind of take these guys under his wing to a certain uh, level. Um, we also rely uh, on our mechanics to a certain degree as well to help with some of these maintenance items mm -hmm. uh, at the plant if it's larger than what they can what they can handle. Um, but they do have some some training on that. Uh, could they use more? For sure they could use more. Um, that's something that we uh, were hoping that this company that we were working with can actually come in and do some on-site training with them so that they go through this. Uh, but until we have the chief plant back and we have a final version of this, I don't think we can get to that point. Of we already reached out to UCN and to ask if, like, if the college could provide like in the mechanical trades, some basic, you know, two weeks of mechanical training for... No, that's a good idea. No, we definitely uh, haven't spoken to them. So, and I think that would be helpful because, you know, then you give them some specific hands-on. Because uh, you don't have a ton of equipment out there and they can tell you, well, to maintain this pump, these are the things you should look for. This is the things you should be adjusting. This is what you should measure. And then build a document well, a training it, plan from there. Wasn't that part of the uh, maintenance schedule and monthly log thing in the draft? Well, there, there is, there, it tells them what to do, but uh, I think what Andre's really saying, what like, to do, it says check pump. Yeah. <clears throat> but there's some basic understanding, like when the water sewer courses they take, there's some basic, like, general level of yeah, what okay. you check, how you check. So, like, okay. some of their training has that, but I, I get what you're saying, because if we have more of a formalized process with an instructor, yeah, well, somebody comes over. Well, also, after, too, right? every, every water treatment plant is different. Yeah. Correct, yeah. So, so you can't really say, well, this is going to be, but they have to know their own plant and they have to know whatever. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Thanks, huh? <coughs> We're good with this one, guys? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 114, uh, Lagoon update. My uh, question was uh, around this is, you know, we, we have some, we've been going through this now for over a year. We said there was a big issue. We've got all sorts of nasty letters from the government, but uh, we should be seeing the actual data that's, test data that's coming from ALS on the lab. Like, are we failing tests every month or are we not? Uh, yeah, uh, not every month, but I would say that we are, I don't have the data with me, Andre, unfortunately. Um, this is something that we've been working to put together, but um, I think it would just be helpful for our group so that whenever we run the test and you send or you send the samples away and you get the lab and send them back, that we highlight where uh, the regulation is supposed to be and where we failed because you know 
we're responsible as well for the environment and we need to know I want to know are we failing that test every single time that we do it and um, and it helps us make sure that we keep the priority on with the government and, and everybody else so um, and I think it helps you guys as well so getting those as soon as you get them on a monthly basis is going to be helping everybody. I will continue to add that to my plate, sure. So the um, the main one is still the chlorine discharge, right? Yeah. Regardless of anything, we're, yeah. we're never going to meet the federal requirement I for know. the QFL. So but now we've got letters on that. Yeah. So having us get the letters, then you did that follow-up or that letter you sent back to them or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if we send those to, we're, okay, where are we with the like we're uh, looking for money, not looking for money, or we need to get our license from the the sustainable development for, for from the approvals branch before we can get to I that point. Time for that already. Uh, we did. We are waiting. Okay. We we should have it in before the before winter. Yeah. Okay. So we're good right now. Okay. Well, so so it, <clears throat> the the government is aware that we're in the like sort of in the queue and in the process of moving forward. So as long as we continue to do so. Um, I think we're okay. We haven't got a nasty le email or anything from them about uh, anything lately, so that's a good sign, I guess. But uh, the first, the first step is to get that license. Once we have the license, then we can come back down in it. We should tie in nicely with budget time, so we can discuss uh, what we need to do for the next, next calendar year. Okay. I just have a quick question. Yep. So, Sam, in order for you to compile that report, how time-consuming do you feel that that would be? Uh, it depends how far you guys want us to go back. Like, if you just want it as of like today, moving forward, it shouldn't be. Send me that the last five reports, and I'll put it in a report for us. Okay, I'll go have to just go. just get the test. Whatever you get, like those test labs, mm -hmm. just send that to me. Sure. And I can summarize it and build you a little chart, and then I'll get your full and I'll help you out on that sent. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, frozen water lines policy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, it's nice. It might be nice to have some. Uh, so the council requested us to put together a policy. Graham, Chris, and myself have been working on it. Jen has uh, obviously stated she would help format it. Uh, we're hoping to have that. I put the kind of next end of next month. That's that's being very generous for us. We can probably get it before that. But uh, that the, uh, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe I can remember. I don't even remember what I said. So the uh, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be honest. I don't even remember what I said. So the uh, uh, I don't know. I I kind of brought up the issue that maybe we shouldn't come up with a policy. I, I thought that was consensus. So I guess we why. Okay, so I'm not confused. No, I okay. thought that was the consensus that we were going to have a policy and we we're just going to deal with it. Yeah, on a case by case basis. Yeah, case because then we're then we're just backed into a corner and yeah. all of a sudden Johnny's got all this crazy story and it's, it's true and now well our policy is is back like we don't need to do whatever. So I think we've got to see the video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, was, it was just one of the items yeah. that was asked for on the okay. new I, I business just, next meeting. It was uh, frozen okay. line policy. Have have I don't think we need one. Well, uh, I, agree I, on I, I like the line of thinking because every case is different, yeah. and if you pigeonhole yourself, then you're always saying the Absolutely. same thing. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. okay. So the consensus is we don't need the policy. Mm. So yeah. definitely check. have it by the end of next month. Oh. Yeah, check it off. <laughs> check it off your list. Yeah. 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 Check done. <laughs> yeah, done. <laughs> <laughs> Put a cold star by the side. We did that on purpose. We knew we were going to remove it. No, I just wanted to get me sweat a bit. Yeah, that's fair. That five hours. Oh, just take something off. I told. I, I knew I told Graham we should have just left it for a while. Don't worry, Sam. We'll bring it back next month. We'll <laughs> 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 forget yeah, what we talked about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How come you don't have it done yet? I told you it was too much. That's right. We have, right. Brian, we have to get Brian to put a screen up so we can play back. <laughs> <laughs> one to one accessibility lift agreement. Did you talk to Chris about this at no, all? No, Chris unfortunately had to go to the hospital this afternoon, so he's uh, not here to Chris speak on this. I um, I can probably run through it. Town of the Paw operates two accessibility lifts. One is at the museum and the other one is at Wellness Centre. These systems required certified personnel to ensure they are maintained to standard. Uh, Chris has looked into it and Otis Group 
has provided an agreement to service them. It's $220 per month, which can be paid annually with quarterly inspections. He believes they have agreements with CKPI in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, I only so commented on this, and I agree with uh, what we need. We need to have something. They have to maintain it. That's special guys. Maybe you could push back a little bit on how much we're paying. That's, that's all I would say. If not, I would, you know, it's not, it's not that big of a amount of money, but I don't know. What those are two pretty small little lifts. Two twenty per month per lift? No, or no, no. For, 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 for both of those. So it'll be. And he's only doing it quarterly. Yeah, four times. So it's twenty six hundred and forty dollars. There is, um, I believe he said there was service calls too that you could call them and they'd help you with stuff. Yeah, pay extra for it. So push back on the price? Or? Well, I mean, I would ask them to just clarify what it is, but one it's not. 20 inches and the other one lifts, I don't even know how yeah. big the museum one is, but it's not big. So more yeah. of a breakdown the, for the two? The, the one at the wellness center. center. The wellness center. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. story. Yeah. yeah, I guess. But that one, yeah. that one was broke down forever and ever, and it was just a fuse was it or something. Yeah, he fixed it. Yeah. yeah. Did he? Yeah, he got it working. Just yeah. a, there's a bit of a door sticking issue, but uh, it's 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 functional. Okay, so, so we want to proceed to see yeah. if we can get a bit better price. Check yeah. on price, but we'll see. <clears throat> and if they won't move on the price, just a resolution to sign. Well, we can't minutes. say that when it's being recorded. <laughs> well, I know, right? <laughs> 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 How do I do that? Oh, oh <laughs> no! <laughs> Unless the price you comes down. Yeah. 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 Oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're listening. All right. Okay. Uh, accessibility left. Planning and development. CDC employee. Um, I just brought this yeah. forward right now to talk to this. I mean, and we're still trying to resolve this a little bit. It's in it's in our, our meeting, but I wanted to get it on the agenda, not to be looking for a, a decision or anything tonight. But really, for that for that group to be um, to be uh, to move forward, it's it's going to need some sort of support person uh, and a full-time capacity to support the activities. Um, I had some ideas I sent to Graham and uh, again I think it's more for an in-camera discussion on how we would do that but I just wanted to get it on the on the table now that, so everybody knows about it and that uh, it's not a surprise. Right? But there's some other things we'll have to talk about in camera because of the confidentiality of it. I believe that would probably be in camera. And if it's if anybody, I'll, I'll send the information ahead of time. If if anybody disagrees, I have no problems with speaking with the other camera. No, that's fine. Uh, just as a comment out of camera, I completely agree that the town of the pond needs some sort of an economic development mm -hmm. officer. The experience last week with that developer, it was all last minute, right? He he, mm -hmm. he was literally all last minute, and there's nobody in the town to go to. Yeah, right. No, I agree. There, there's nobody. So. I did everything, right? Uh, and uh, and that's kind of how I had in mind, uh, Herb, is that, uh, you know, it's, I think there's a way of, of structuring this position where if something doesn't go the way we feel or we don't believe that we're getting to where we are, as long as we hired the right person, um, then we still have the position there and that person can continue in under whatever, under yeah, whatever, whatever uh, umbrella. I would agree. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. So this is going to come back in, in camera. camera. Yep. Yeah. Uh, not today, though. Yeah. Uh, zoning amendment conditional use. This is about the public hearing that was held earlier tonight, where Northern Lights Paving submitted a zoning amendment, amendment to permit an asphalt manufacturing refining plant as a conditional use within the industrial heavy zone. Uh, if council approves the amendment and the conditional use, it is recommended that one of the conditions be that all required licenses, environmental, be provided to the town before the plant is operational. And you guys just have to decide how you want to move forward. If, I'm oh. going to declare. I just don't know. This this map looks different than the maps that I've seen before. This is the map that was provided to me through zone or yeah, yeah, the yeah. drafting department. But didn't he say tonight that he had moved locations? He's not operating there uh, when I talked to no. him. No. He said that he's just doing it, just that it's in now. He might as well keep going. 
Yeah, there was no nobody opposed to it, nobody in favor of it. No. it, it was, so no, it's fine. There's a bylaw on the table, so you have yeah, to make so a decision whether. So the resolution come to council. And yeah, and then you up. vote that. Maybe well, if you're yeah. gonna. I just I was just confused as to where the enter and where he was going to be going because I'm not getting. I thought it was in their tongues, but I mean, he never he was, asked where he was going. He just said that he'd probably different locations. No, no, no. I mean, no, like where he was for going. The like, summer intern. Yeah, oh, okay. like where the plant was located. It just seemed like a. Kind of a weird run to go all the way through and then come. I don't know if he. I was kind of just curious as to whether or not the intent was to go and make a different road somewhere and then. I, I don't know, well, I don't know if that's even. If see, he road. owns property back there. Well, but as far as it relates to this yes, issue, it this yeah, it resolution will come to council yeah. and we'll yeah. either approve yeah. or deny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it'd be resolution for second reading. Yep. <clears throat> The process. Uh, senior housing, West Acres development. I guess this is just an update from yep. last week. That's all. Yeah, and then from? I think Trevor had something on here to go. Yeah, with this I too. just had a I just put an issue sheet out there just because I was just going forward. I mean, it's got kind of back to the, the first point that the issue sheet that Andre had in your comments that uh, I you know we it was kind of a, well not kind of it was a town of the paw thing with started with Mr. Penner and. I guess so. It's there's. I just want to clear up any confusion in terms of. I guess the CDC wants to be there to help, but we're not sure. Like because it's, it's with the town where our role is, or was, and now where it should be going forward, or whether or not the town would like. You know, is it this is that spot of land, or is it one spot of land that you were talking about? Is that something that you want the CDC to say, okay, here, open up proposals for. To other people and compare them. Do you want us to talk to this gentleman and help him organize and kind of help with the investors or anything else? Is there? I guess that's where I'm kind of because no one wants to step on anyone's toes. Nope. Again, without an employee, you know, I'm not. We can do the best we can to help, but it's it's obviously a little tough when you're dealing with people who have full time jobs. But we're here to help. We want to make sure we're all on the same page. So. We're not not doing anything or doing too much, and kind of get your you know get people upset because we're we're not we haven't been there from the beginning. So just yeah, I get. Uh, okay. So as as I had mentioned, and I think in the email, so this was very last minute. I didn't mm -hmm. call Ken to come up. He just said I've got a, something to do in Swan. I'm going to come up and see you on uh, Monday. And uh, so then. Uh, I scrambled really, really quick uh, because Brandine, as you know, has gone on holidays, and I just put it together really, really quickly. Uh, that being said, we had a limited in attendance at the investor meeting at lunchtime, but uh, the yeah, uh, the evening session, forty-five people, forty-eight, 48 yeah. people. That's what I counted. That's forty-eight right. people, and of that forty-eight, uh, there's a term in sales of an ABC buyer. Yeah, I would say a significant number of those people were A buyers, ready, willing, and able. Um, so there's an interest, right? There's clearly an interest. It didn't seem like the pricing uh, offended or scared anybody, right? So I, I think there's something there. Uh, I would love to have the CDC involved in this uh, because this is a big deal for our community and there's some smart people at the table. And whatever we can do as a community to make this work, by all means, just, just make it work, right? Uh, if we can hire an EDO person down the road to help, even better, because uh, this is it's a big deal. And he had some interesting stats and uh, not really stats, but commentary about the value a, a senior citizen brings to a community and the economy. Yeah. It's very impressive. One so, and a half to two and a half jobs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. right. So uh, I, of course, whatever we can do. Uh, there may be a couple things that I would mention uh, in camera on the negotiation side of things, but uh, generally speaking, absolutely. If they can help, absolutely. And Ken's supposed to be providing a he's, Oh yeah, more the, where we left off, he's supposed to be sending us up sample agreements. Like a package. Yeah, because I said the first thing an investor is going to want to know is, let's see the terms. So uh, that's, that's where it's at. And I haven't received anything. So then we'll add it to our agenda yep. Yep. for Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Uh, where are we now? 
Four CD. Office four space. Fuck, CDC. And we had a nasty landlord throw us out of their building. Oh, no, <laughs> <it is. laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess what we're looking for, I know, uh, because it was really underutilized, and I guess there was some, we thought that uh, with the... Uh, the chamber that they were going to be able to do something this summer so we, we we had already talked about maybe moving out of there in june or july and when kim left and then thought that we could keep on but we didn't uh so i guess what we're looking for now is we don't have a need for an office office um at this time but we do have a need for a space um because there's stuff in there i don't even know what's in there but there's no use for me or anybody else or a mover to go down there unless we know where we're bringing the stuff uh, so what I'm going to ask if we could uh, get a office donated by the town uh, to the CDC more for storage and uh, uh, as such now. It doesn't matter where it is, uh, just that we want to be able to put, our, put whatever files and such are in there. And then down the road if we end up with a position, then we'll uh, decide what we're going to do there. Yeah, I didn't. I'm thinking there must be something upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. I'm thinking. Yeah. I did ask. I think I asked you, Jenny, that there is empty offices around. Yeah. They're not necessarily empty, but they yeah. need to be. They need to be cleaned up. So there's so nobody using them. There's nobody using yeah. them. Yeah. And, and there's a nice big space the, for meetings. Yeah. 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 That's old entrance. Yeah. yeah. So, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. So. Same here. Yeah. So I guess do we need a resolution to a consensus? And then we no, pass yeah. a resolution, yeah. right? So if everybody is good with the idea, well, it depends on the P. Free. Free. <laughs> Just want to argue with that. You want to make it better and free? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, want to pay us the <laughs> you want to negotiate? <laughs> no, I'm for it. Consensus is everybody's good. Carry yeah. 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 Okay. There you go. Good. Uh, public community washrooms. This September 9th committee of the whole meeting during the new business next meeting, uh, I believe it was Councillor Forrest asked to have Forrester asked to have the public washrooms brought forward again. This was discussed at the February 11th committee of the whole, and at that time the direction of council was that Councillor Zelinsky was to approach the homeless shelter and see if it would be possible to build a small public washroom attached to the existing shelter. If this, if the, my or recommendation was that if the homeless shelter wasn't interested, if council still wanted to go forward with this, where would we could put it, who's going to pay for it, and who's going to clean it? I had a suggestion a while back, and I still think it's a good one, that one of the washrooms that are at the homeless shelter right now be made so it's, there's access just outside. So I think there probably would be, if there's not one already that's close to the to link, Exterior wall and the <coughs> door, like I believe the. Well, there's all the rooms. Yeah, exactly. Outside, right? So if, they could, kind of rooms, if they could do some small, minor renovation to. What's that? They don't work. Why the rooms work? on the outside. The majority of Majority of the yeah. yeah. But could we not? Uh, and Jerry, uh, uh, the only thing is, I'm thinking that might be the easiest versus what? Putting a washroom, like porta potties? No. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, they're not gonna, it's not going to work. There's no one around to supervise it. The area is already a familiar area to the people that will be using it anyway. Uh, make it such that it's not a, it's a super small washroom. I don't know, I'm just saying it, like it's very easy, but I, I'm sure there's be some money and difficulties there, but in terms of another solution, I can't really see. They, they have a washroom there that's open during the day, right now. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the inside the building. Mm -hmm. That's no. what she told me when I went for that hamburger no. thing the other day. Well, uh, it was that open. day. <laughs> that, that day it's was locked throughout the day. Yeah, There's people so can't come and go in there throughout well, the day. Well, she said during the day. I think uh, I think yeah. Carrie's half the board. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I mentioned that I might be the other half <laughs> of the board with you. <laughs> no, and when I talked to her, and she said that there were some plans coming or something. No. No, it's close throughout the day. Um, there is an office manager. The do even though the when the office manager is there, the door will be locked because locked. You, you need to have your work safe policy going on. Um, if by chance there is a second person there, if they're cleaning or they're prepping, which I'm pretty sure isn't going on, then you know by all means somebody could go inside. 
But can there be some renovations? I'm just trying to remember what it looks like. Could there be some minor renovations to be able to have an outside access? Yeah, and, housing the building. No, I know, so but possibly. Yeah, and then so that it's isolated between, no, you know. Gonna do that. What's that? I don't think that'll happen. And then I have a story about staying away from negative people that they always have a problem. <laughs> 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 just saying. Those, those six but it has to be able to do something. The six rooms need to be renovated back to how they were initially so that they, people can be housed inside. But is there any way that there could be other renovations done to add a washroom? Or For sure, but you'd have to go through Manitoba oh, Housing. That's how it has to go through. Yeah. Can we make that request building. to Manitoba Housing to say, hey, uh, guys, we, we'd like to help you out and... Uh, you think you can make this happen? And I, think a, the I think a letter from the town to Manitoba House would be great. Yes? So, is it the, who's who's in charge? Like, is it at the, like, who's in charge? I have no idea. Uh, Manitoba House? Yeah. Is it locally? Or no, is it Thompson. No, it's Thompson. 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 Like, there is local management, there's supervisors. Yeah. But, but who, who makes the decisions at this place? Thompson? Uh, Thompson. Yeah. I would say Thompson, probably. Okay. Yeah, I can send some contact info. So could we send a letter asking for a meeting with them to discuss the possibility of a public washroom okay. there? Because, I mean, I, I can see them being open to it. I mean, we were at some one of those scanning meetings, I believe, Thompson, and I think Manitoba House is part of some of it. They have dry housing, they have wet housing, and they have some intermittent uh, tape housing. So. I mean, I think, so they obviously understand some of the needs that, that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I've sure. noticed is our community is severely lacking in Manitoba. Like, we have a lot of Manitoba housing in our community, but if you look at surrounding communities, uh, <coughs> Manitoba housing has an even bigger uh, involvement in the community. Definitely. Um, you look at Swan River, you look at Thompson, uh, and the amount of Manitoba housing that's in those communities is huge um, and I think should we add that to the agenda we should, too, uh, we should add that that's what I was getting at is that yeah. we should add that to the agenda what, what do you mean by involvement well like in the amount of properties that are owned you'd like community. to see them build some more I would yeah. love to see them build some more so but we'll request a meeting with them those will be the agenda items okay okay cool Oh, RCMP meeting at AMM. Um, each year the RCMP attends the AMM convention in order to meet with municipal stakeholders to discuss policing issues with individual municipalities. In order to make the best use of their time, they are asking that municipalities that want to meet submit a brief outline of the issues they would like to discuss. What does council want to bring forward? Cost. Cost. I had cost, homeless, and possibly peace officers. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I would be curious uh, when when the staff sergeant was here the other day. We had asked the question that if we put up the money for another officer, could we not have more input into his activities? And the answer was no. <coughs> but why not? <coughs> so if we hired somebody to focus on the uh, issues yeah. uptown. Why can't we direct our employee to that? That would be a question to ask <coughs> these people at AMM. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that's a good suggestion. I mean, yeah. Didn't you say that we could if it was a peace officer, but not if it was RCMP? Yeah. 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 If it's RCMP, then they're working for the province. Yeah. So, but if we're prepared to hire another one, this yeah. is what we'd like you to do. And to me, it's... Well, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like any enforcement. If they do mind kind of looking at yeah. this particular way. And, and then I know it, I think there's a resolution that we're asking amen. Maybe we could ask them, uh, like, our, the proceeds of crime. I want to bring that up. Like, like mm -hmm. how come we're like that? Thompson, 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 Thompson seems Potter. to get a yeah, lack like of money this, out of that. This application. There's no crime in the park. Yeah. Like, so there's no drugs in the park. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> 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 
sidetracked with Stit Girl. At some point in the past, the town was under, or at the last meeting, the mayor had suggested investigating possible supply contract with Stitco. Um, at some point, in the, this is from Graham, the controller. At some point in the past, the town was under a contract with Stitco to receive a nominal discount on the propane supply rate. No contract has existed for a number of years. He discussed the issue with Gary Lashmeter from the Paw Stitco office, who recommended an email asking that a contract be investigated by the head office. Graham has also noted that securing a contract of this nature would require a public tender as per the purchasing policy. If the council wants to consider a supply contract, we should approach this issue as a public tender for the propane supply. Yeah, why, why wouldn't we try and ask for a deal? Okay. So do, what it, as we a, do for, it as a tender. Uh, it fluctuates it fluctuates. between 72 and 78 in the last little while. Plus all the taxes. Yeah. The carbon tax on top of that? Yeah. Okay. So move forward with doing a tender? Yep. Yes. <coughs> Okie dokie, payroll and accounts. Uh, we will need a resolution for pay period 19 in the amount of $104,117.32. Uh, general checks in the amount of $864,428.64. And EFTs in the amount of $64,232.91. Um, I noticed, know, made comments about a check in the amount of 13446 It was for the airport and the town garage. Volumetric calibrations. Uh, for the fuel tanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, there was one for True Blue Developments for 47, approximately 4,700. It was sewer replacement. We use they assisted you guys. Uh, another one for Wolseley, you know, 10,479. It was for sewer pipes, curb valve, and pipes. Inventory. Uh, another one, border chemical, was 5,318 water treatment plant chemicals. Same with clear, in clear tech industries, 5,450 for more water treatment plant chemicals. Did, with your chemical contracts, and this might not be appropriate here, but do they like bid that out every couple of years, or how does how do they get competitive bids on that? Uh, I suspect that I don't know for 100%. I'll have to talk to the purchasing agent. Um, be better suited for Graham, but I believe the purchasing agent will just get quotes from uh, the, all the suppliers that provide that in the province. <coughs> you don't have a regular like delivery of chemicals? We do, yeah. They would just do it yearly. You just get a price at the beginning of the year and then move from there. Good. Yep. There's another one for $60,000, which was AV gas for the airport. Um, then there was one for $559,848, that was one quarter for the RCMP. Then there was one for $26,899 for the 1990 pumper repairs for the fire truck. And I don't know if anyone else, anything else sticks out to anybody. Who's Harold Brazil? Pardon me? Harold Brazil, who's that? It's the very, very last yeah. one, sorry, in the register. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't oh. know what that is, sorry. <laughs> And the one beside it, that Aerospace Canada was not. It was a refund. Um, it was a refund in property taxes. They overpaid. So it was just a person. Probably what happened, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know for sure. But chances are, what happened was his company or his bank paid his property taxes, and then yeah. he came and paid his property taxes. Got it. Thank you. And, what about that the, aerospace one? They were charged an error for fuel from the airport. Oh, that's for the airport. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Another one? I shut mine on. Yeah. Resolution? Yep. That. Any other questions on the check register? I know probably yeah. people have a hard time seeing it. 
Uh, July finance report. Um, Graham provided this. He had no concerns or anything to point out since the last time. We're on track. Um, we're on track. Everything's fine. Airport very low fuel cells. Says there's been no yeah, fires. That's fair. one of the. And the yeah. bombers are gone, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, KRC. Yep. KRC financial update. The, this is just there the final. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I just put this together because uh, it was mentioned that they wanted you guys wanted an update. So I think when Graham presented the June one, there was a few questions. Yes, right? and then it ironed itself by July. Um, but there is a few. I think the biggest thing right now that's sticking out is KRC is over with expenses, um, and some of the things that are in there is because some of our revenues haven't been received for summer students. So all of our summer programs would be charged out, but we haven't received the funds back yet. So um, that would be one of the big things. And then also our dance program, we had uh, ran our dance program for about um, five years. Um, at the end of the season, probably May, they had come and talked to me and talked about going on their own. Um, so we had paid out those wages, and then normally we get the money back when we get the um, revenues in the in the fall. But because they've gone out on their own now, um, we it's about twenty thousand, I think eighteen thousand that we would be kind of in deficit for that program because we are not running it. So they're on their own now. Remember, you paid out the wages. Well, we paid when we collect the wages um, because we collect so much of it. It we get all the wages or we. All the registrations are in the fall, and then we pay the wages out until May. Oh. So it kind of balances, um, like the spring season would balance the winter season. But because we're not collecting any revenues, our revenues was all collected last year. So, so at the end of 2018, when you guys do your financials and your balance sheets, do you guys make it a, do you, do you account for that? Because in some industries that would be considered like an under revenue? Right. Um, we it's normally balanced so we haven't had to do that because it's not ever in deficit it's normally it's how it's always been done not that it's been right but the first year would have under revenue but then it would have balanced its cell phone after yeah that. so it kind of would have the January to make payments yeah but for the previous year's revenue yeah that's not an accurate financial I know it's not but I you know <clears throat> Usually anything that you owe or after the Yes, event. that you would do a tr yeah. transfer of funds. We've never, we do that with a lot of other programs, just not with the dance. I don't know why, but we probably should have. Okay. Because so then they, we would have not have, been in this, no, no, no. Okay. no. Okay. Then we wouldn't have been in this situation with them leaving, I guess. The money just wasn't a credit Yeah. That's it just should have been transferred over with the wages. Nobody owes anybody. No, anything. nobody knew. And the dance is no longer. They're on their the rent. Right. Right? No, they're, they're renting the church. Um, the church, yes. So they're starting their program out of there. <laughs> Any ideas to backfill that? Um, to run a program like or that? To, or, or to do something to build. Well, we'll, you know, we're going to run some other kind of kids programs. Like a, we have a Ninja Kids program planned, but um, we won't run a dance program. Um, just with her program yeah. running, there's no way you can compete with that. So I wouldn't even try. And you need certified instructors. So um, she's kind of took over everything, which is good. It's The program has grown. When she came here, we had no dance program. And uh, last year we had 181 kids. So... You know, she's just going to keep growing. The program is getting bigger and bigger, and it's almost, I don't, you know, with uh, the program demands of that program, it's kind of good that they're on their own because the administrative time that you need to run that is a lot. So. Do you have any, just, and I'm, uh, you may not have the answer to this, but do you have any idea how much you collect in user fees from people under 15 years of age? Oh, like for memberships of wellness centers? Anything. Well, how much do you take in? I, I don't know offhand. I'd have to look at that. Okay. Would it be anywhere in your budget a guy could pick it out? Um, probably most of our summer programs and pool programs would probably. Summer and pool? Yeah. Oh, okay. I would say they're all. They would all be. And under? Yeah, for sure. Because it would be soccer, ball. Are there any programs um, at the Wellness Center for 15 and under? Um, we have, we've had a lot of kids programs, like Ninja Kids, we've had Fit Kids, we've had, uh, and like 
I'd have to go back and look at numbers, but there is... So that's where a guy would look? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then there's family memberships, so you're... Yes, yeah. like we have a lot of youth memberships, um, but they're not broken down. Like in the budget, it would be one month, six months. I'd have to do some okay. research to find out actually how many students are buying. We actually do have a lot of students that buy, because now at the high school, with the gym program, um, they can do gym on their own. I think Trevor could correct yeah, me. Yeah, they get credit. And they get credit. Yeah. So the kids actually come to the wellness center. We can sign off on their hours. and So there is a lot yeah. of parents that come in and buy that. And, and I, I guess that's why I was asking about backfilling the dance thing. Like uh, after, after school, uh, things like uh, from... Went to school, get out quarter to four. Mm -hmm. From quarter to four until, <clears throat> say, quarter to six, two hours in there. Is there programs that we can do for to after kind of school programs to bring more kids in? Because I, I think we're kind of lacking that all the way through in that in that one time period. Lots of competition in that time period, though. Mm -hmm. There is lots, and yeah. I would say High that. High school sports, swimming after some hockey, um, the big, all the big programs are running at that time. That's the, that's the, big, you know, I, me and I have talked about this before, you know, you really need to get all those major groups together and schedule. Because a lot of times, like, well, yeah, say, well, you can't do this because I'm in this. Yeah. I can't be a swimmer because I'm playing hockey at that time. I mean, there's Unfortunately, it'll never change. It. No, I know. Because more is always better. Yeah. And people don't want to have seasons for sports. They want to do... They want it's to just even if you schedule... But even if you scheduled what I said before, even if you scheduled your young group of hockey players, don't schedule swimming for the young group the same night. Like schedule it so the young group on Tuesday and make them on Wednesday so that you don't have to choose. So what if you what if you don't play high school sports? What if you don't play hockey? What if you don't swim? Is there a possibility of having um, like in that time yeah, frame, just like an open gym? And I know open gym can be like not free range, but even if there was, it's hard to say. We've it's hard had to say um, what I'm trying to say the after school programs. I think are very good things. Um, the kids. I would say that you probably would never get the kids that are very active in doing things right now because they're already committed to activities. Um, right now I find that if you're probably 12, 13 and under, you're probably in an organized program. That 13 to 18, I don't know how to get those kids. I think every group is lacking. I think even with hockey, they're struggling with Bantam and Midget age well, group. Well, Bantam's actually got good numbers because they, they did the right thing. They took care of the kid, the group before them. So the Pee Wee group that's there grew the, the bathroom group this year. They got like 29 kids. Good. And you'll have, you'll have just as many moving into the next age group if you take care of the kids that are in bathroom this year. With, with your budget, your overall budget, the kids who are 15 and under, do they represent a significant amount of your income? Uh, I would say, yeah, probably a good chunk of it. For, the, for Kelsey Rec? For Kelsey Rec. For Kelsey Rec, Rec definitely. Um, because I would say majority of them is aimed at kids programs. So, so like the pool when you programs. say a lot, are you ten grand, a hundred grand? Oh, um, just, I know. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> right. just, just guess. Um, I don't. I don't even know. <laughs> I, I'm not an expert. Yeah. I'm not no, an a expert. good chunk of it, right. though. I would say. I went to a conference in Regina this past weekend, and. Uh, it talked. It was a drug intervention thing, and it talked about um, at-risk kids, and they could not stress enough the importance of getting to kids who are between 10 and 15 years of age. Mm -hmm. They say that's your window, and if we miss that window, you lose them. You lose them. So what I'm wondering, uh, because I hear it often that kids can't go to the wellness center because they can't afford it. So I'm wondering, as a community, what can we do? for that age group to show them a better way of life. Trevor has mentioned in the past about, you know, we spend all this money on policing, but what if we spend a little bit of money before they get involved with the police? Yeah, uh, we can definitely do that. Um, I can look for some funding. I know we've had in the past after school programs, so it was targeted at youth at risk. It was about three times a week. 
Um, and the kids who came were not the regular basketball kids because the basketball kids have memberships. They can come. They're not concerned. It's the ones that can't it's, afford it's to. It's those other ones. Yeah. Right? yeah. One of the suggestions that we talked about before, I don't know how realistic it is, but I honestly think that like Kelsey Rec uh, does the, allocates the Moffitt Foundation money, right? So you got 100 grand. I think that between the school division, because that's all people talk about through school, should work with the Kelsey Rec and fill out the grant that all the money goes towards the Kelsey School Division students and is used for Kelsey Rec programs. So that 100 grand goes between the school and Kelsey Rec. So if I've got a grade four class that wants to go swimming, we're going swimming. And we're doing that program, all that money is is between all the schools we can figure out what's yep. allocated yep. everywhere. Uh, the high school the budget's okay for, for the phys ed, so we would buy chunks of uh, $200 uh, uh, go to the gym, here you go. But then, you know, some kids, it would be better if you could say, hey, I could have, I'll buy 10 memberships, and then there's always could be 10 people, say, from the from the high school could use it, but there's 10 memberships. That's more money in your pocket, more kids can use it. I'm not handing out individual passes that might go in the laundry and not get used, right? So the, uh, I, I, that's, that's kind of where I am. Uh, a lot of the schools are applying for the money anyway. Like you look at who applies for it. There's the odd community group that will apply and get it, but by and large, it's a lot of the, the schools that do it. That's the kids that we want to get. Yeah. I don't know how the, all the Moffat Foundation rules, but from what I understand, the mission statement is to keep that group together and, and keep them busy. Yeah. I think they would be all over it. And then also, too, in the past, and no offense, but I think some of the money that has been used in the past, the project says this, but okay, you did that. That's kind of never fit the, the mission of what it's about. And then if you're dealing with the school, they have a grant writer. There's a lot more accountability. You know what's going to be used in the, in the, in the right way. Yeah. So I, I think that would help out. And then it's a no, no lose for us. The 100 grand stays yep. in the community and is used to support yep. a facility that <coughs> is never meant to make money. It's right. just there to, yeah. to, to service. service to, to, it's important as well when we have those young folks in our uh, grasp that we uh, have somebody there who can talk to them, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, to, to, to try to show them there's a different way in life. Because it... Uh, if you don't have the right person talking to them, they don't. I, I've been out, and again, I made a bit of a comment to jest about there's no drugs in the paw. There is drugs in the paw, right? And uh, we're, we're fortunate right now because we don't have, in the town of the paw, we don't have an epidemic like some of the cities do. That doesn't mean we're immune from it. So I feel like there's a bit of a window here, and that we really need to go through that window. So uh, I, anything we can do to help, right, I, I'm very interested. I think the Paw Community Renewal Corp, I think some of what they do would fit with this too. So, they actually, I'm just talking to Desiree, she's doing 10 free swims and 10 free skate nights. So there is yeah, um, right. some things that they're doing, um, the Roadrunner, there's... A few other groups I've been talking to as well that are looking at different avenues of what we could do to kind of offer that uh, barrier-free yeah. recreation. So yeah. um, we can definitely look into more of that. But that is um, the hardest age group to get. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other questions for uh, Amber on this area? No? Everybody's good? Okay. All right, uh, limestone. Uh, an invitation to tender to for supply and delivery of, sorry, for supply, haul, and stockpile of a thousand cubic yard, one and a half inch. Is that what it is? I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. this is all yeah. Greek to me. Limestone was sent out. One tender was received. Recommendation of the purchasing agent was to accept the tender from, and I can't even say his name. Thank you. Contracting yeah. Limited. In the lump sum amount of twenty thousand four hundred fifty-four dollars, including PST and GST, be accepted. And I believe you're in need of this stuff, right? Yeah. And it's within budget. Is it within budget? Yes, it is. There you go. Resolution is required. Everybody's good. Yep. Yeah.
All right, uh, T1 Gravel. An invitation to tender was sent to suppliers. An advertisement was placed on the town, town's webpage, Mercs, and in the Opasco Times for supply hall and stockpile of a thousand cubic yard trite one gravel. Three bids were received, and the recommendation of the purchasing agent was to accept the tender from Lakeshore Landscaping in a lump sum amount of sixteen thousand nine hundred five dollars, including taxes. And yeah, within, within, within budget. Within budget. Oh, so sorry. Sure. I just, just to clarify, these items, when they get purchased, they go into inventory first, and they okay. don't get allocated to budget until we pull them out of inventory to be utilized per job. Okay. So it's a big pressure thing. Type 1 gravel. What's type 1 gravel? Uh, so it's, it'd be 3 inch, basically, probably uh, the kind of layman's terms for it. Uh, it's, it's classified under City of Winnipeg as acceptable backfill, backfill material underneath a roadway. So any digs that we do under a roadway, what we've been trying to do is change our practice because before we were just backfilling with clay and we we're seeing a ton of settling, so we're trying to move to gravel. Uh, this is the largest size we can use that still fits the Winnipeg spec, which is pretty much province wide. Uh, but and it saves us some money instead of using the two inch we have on site. So we're going to try to use this in supplement of that because it's cheaper, but it still fits the requirement. Thank you. Cool. Resolution to come forward? Yeah. Always good. Is that it? It can't be it. Yeah, and now let's just do new business for next meeting. Any new business for next meeting, guys? Other than that, I'll, I'll put the CDC yep. stuff on the agenda and I'll, I'll set, try to, myself and Trevor will try to send some stuff ahead of time. But I'll be sending in the issue sheet for stop signs at the cottaging. Where? Uh, Clearwater? Lake Lots. Mm. Lake Lots. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. All right. If they're sending me issue sheets, we're good. Good. We do have a couple of in-camera items. Uh, there'll be no business come out of them. So resolve that we now move ourselves into the in-camera portion. Woohoo! Ready to With Mayor Jakes in the chair to discuss matters requiring our attention. All righty.